Sure. Whatever you think. So you are the orchid whisperer. Thank you. I'm so excited. My mother has. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It's going to be great. Are you all ready? Oh yes, All right. Who's here on Pedro Montemars? Come on up, Pedro. Montemars. Yes. Just kind of off the record, I'll start out by telling you that there has been a slight change in our applications. Yes. That we last far that you reset it to finish up the application process for probation. Okay. What? I, I think he's going to want to withdraw that ah. and ask for you to decide between two and five, I believe, is what. what all right. If you all want to do a, a plea page, redo that. Okay. Have you already done that? No, ma'am. Uh, we just, I just have the old one. So uh, this is new information since this morning, Judge. So initially it was going to be five silent. Now he's saying, I, I, you know, they just want to, he just wants a to do offer. Okay. So if you all want to write what your to do offer is, just to change it to a cap. Yeah. All right. And you all will need to sign off on it. Sure. I don't know. So he's making this in go between two and five. Okay. So would you initial one for me, please? It's going to be a five. Oh, yeah. And so his plea bargain agreement was really originally for him to apply yes. for probation or deferred adjudication. Now he just so wants to do time. So and so I'll make a decision because they're agreeing to capify, which means. I can sentence him anywhere from five to two years. Well, from two to five years in the prison. All right, court is calling 2023 CR 6552W, State of Texas versus Pedro Montemoros. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Jim Olson's door for Pedro Montemoros. And are you Mr. Montemoros? All right, you entered a plea. So the offense of robbery on July 31st, it was scheduled for a PSI and TAP evaluation. And then there was a DDRF evaluation that we were waiting the results on. According to the, your original plea bargain agreement, you applied for deferred adjudication. The state was requesting that your punishment be assessed at five years in the prison, and they were silent on your application. Uh, I've just been informed by both parties that you wish to withdraw your application for deferred adjudication. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth that nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, ma'am. All right, make sure you keep your voice up. You can lower your hand. If you'll state your name for the record, please. Pedro Montemoros. All right, Mr. Montemoros, you understand that your original plea bargain agreement was for the state to remain silent on your application? Yes, ma'am. And you are asking that your application for deferred adjudication or probation be withdrawn? Yes, ma'am. Have you discussed the withdrawing of that application with your attorney? Um, yes. Okay. And there's a new offer that has been tendered to the court. Is that correct, state and defense? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and state, would you like to offer into evidence the new plea bargain agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. State offers uh, state's exhibit one. Or the, sorry, it's two. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Any objection? No objections. All right. All right, Mr. Montemoris, I'm going to show you what's the, the entitled the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the new plea bargain agreement, which the court does not have to follow, you understand that? Yes, the court can go with your original agreement. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. But according to this new agreement, you're asking that your punishment be assessed at a cap of five years and the state will remain silent. All other conditions are to remain. Is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, ma'am. State? Yes, ma'am. All right. Have both party any questions? I'm sorry for Mr. Montemaris. Yes, Your Honor. May I? Yes. 
uh, Pedro, you've heard everything here today and we've talked before we came up and you've expressed to me that, uh, I guess in your in your words, you, you just want to get this over with as well as you can. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And um, you and I worked with the state a little bit about uh, kind of pulling all that back to now it's a cap of five. You understand that means a judge can go anywhere from two to five. And I explained there's no promises made by, by me or by uh, Mr. Wilkins over here about what the judge will do. Um, I was going to tell her a couple of things that I know about her, about, about you, excuse me, her, tell her some things that I've found out about you that I think are in your favor, but I'm going to give you a chance briefly. Is there, uh, what's your family situation like? Are you, uh, are you raising children? Let's give the judge a little bit of background uh, so she can know a little bit about what to do. Uh, I'm not married. I have children, yes. Okay. Uh, I'd rather get this soon. Okay. Um, when you when you were working, what kind of work do you do? I was doing um, residential and commercial plumbing. Plumbing? Yeah. When you were arrested, around the time you were arrested, and it's been a while now, uh, were you engaged in that working uh, kind of on a steady basis? Not at that moment. Okay. Do you have a, a chance when you're released from jail? It sounds like a skilled job. Uh, is it? Is yes. plumbing something that uh, requires uh, training? Yes. How long have you been doing the plumbing before uh, you? Yeah, I was doing it under the table. I was working for my friend named Miguel. Well, I've been doing it for like a good two, three years on and off. Okay. So did that involve installing things or just were you just digging a, a hole? Yeah. Or Okay, that's pretty hard work. Yeah, correct. But yeah. you were learning about. Yeah, at the same time I was, I was learning. Yeah. All right, you all got to make sure okay. that it's one at a time. And I'm sorry, you're gonna have to speak up. The court reporter won't be able to hear you. You were the the judge just said when I talk, you stop, and I'll do the same thing. So you by doing the digging to get the work going, you also stayed around. I assume and observed someone that was a master plumber, right? Doing the work, right? Yes, sir. And you, you were running from that, I assume, correct? Yes, sir. So eventually you would be able to move up the ladder and do the kinds of things that you'd already observed him doing. Yes, sir. Did you assist him in those other jobs as well as digging? Yes, sir. Okay, that's all I have now. All right, any questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right, so why did you commit this crime? I really don't have an answer for you. So when's the last time you were treated for your mental health issues? Um, I believe it was in 2016, I think. So it appears from looking at your history, none of it is violent offenses, but you have issues. Your issue is your mental health evaluation, which is bipolar and schizophrenia. And then we have you doing a lot of drugs, meth, Xanax, and heroin. So when's the last time you used heroin before you were taken into custody? Um, it was the day before I was locked up. I got locked up, yeah. Okay. When I got locked up, I was on Xanax. Okay. And then I'm reading the report that your mother doesn't want you in the home, so you have no place to stay. So basically what you're asking me to do is I'm assuming you're going to ask me to send you to prison for the minimum, which would be two years. And then because you want to get everything over with, and then you're going to come out, you're still going to have your mental health issues that you're not being treated for. You're still going to to be homeless because you're not going to have uh, employment when you get out of prison and we're going to be right back where we are now which is you committing a crime and you come in before another judge only this time you're going to be a repeater so here's what i i can do you can either do five years in prison that's what i would give you or either I will give you deferred adjudication. On deferred adjudication, we'll get you some help for your mental health issues and for your drug issues. But what I can tell you is, one, you're not a gang member, according to the report that I've received. 
what I can tell you is when you leave the prison, if you decide to go through the easy route, which is go to prison and do your time, maybe they'll let you out in two years, who knows? But when you get out, you're gonna think you have your life together, but prison normally is not a place where people get their life together. You're still gonna have mental health issues. You're still gonna have no place to stay. And the last time you use may be the last time you use, in which case your mom may end up reading about somebody on the news or seeing somebody on the news and having to go identify your body. So you have a choice. If you want prison, I will send you to prison for five years. If you want deferred adjudication, I will give you deferred adjudication. The state is solid. But Deputy Laura always says probation in this court is not easy. So which would you prefer, prison or probation? Will I get help in probation? Like, uh, are you, are you gonna, they're going to help me with like, like. You'll probably be going to safe P or inpatient treatment to begin with mm -hmm. because there is a waiting list in felony drug court. But I will refer you to felony drug court because they have a dual diagnosis that can help you with your mental health issues and also help you with housing and employment. Or you can do prison. I'll take the relation. All right. So how old are your children? Um, my oldest is 12, my two youngest are seven, and uh, one of them passed away, so. All right. So hopefully you can get your life together where you can be in their life. But right now you gotta work on you, you understand? All right, so I'm gonna send in to you to six years deferred adjudication. This is the run concurrent with 710670. Take in consideration the following 2023 CR 3373 710671. There's to be no contact with the following the Best Western at 78238. There's a $500 fine that will be probated. I'm going to do a referral to felony drug court. And we're going to do safe P. And he's to remain in custody. Going to do 250 hours of community service restitution. Going to order parenting classes. If he successfully completes parenting classes, then 100 hours will be waived. How far did you go in school? I just made it to ninth. All right. Why did you drop out at ninth? Um, I had issues with somebody in, in the same. I'm sorry, what? I had issues with somebody in the same school. What did he say? Inside the school. He had issues with someone inside okay. the school. All right. The remaining 150 hours will be waived if he obtains his GED or goes to some type of trade school and completes it. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. The UA hotline. 90 sober meetings in 90 days upon release. Field visits one time per month until further notice. Proof of employment within 45 days of release. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. So if you start doing well and your children want to have contact with you, it'll have to start off with supervised contact. You understand? Uh, yes. Okay. 
Um, can I ask you something? Sure. Well, um, why does it have to be supervised if nothing? It had nothing to do with my children. I'm sorry. What? If the case had nothing to do with my children, why why, why does it? Have to be supervised. All right. The best way Obsessed. I can. No, no, no. I under and I appreciate that. Let me give you an example. Do you love your children? Yeah, I do. And you would do anything for them? Yes. And you want them protected? Yes. All right. So let's say that you need a babysitter for your children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And somebody recommends me to you to babysit your children. Mm -hmm. And you say, Great, her credentials are great. My friends say she's a great babysitter, but you say, mm, it's my children. I still want to test her out. So you have me come to your house to babysit your children. First day, everything goes well. Second day, you say, you know what? I'm going to set up cameras to make sure everything's going well. And I'm going to go to the grocery store. You go to the grocery store. You watch what's happening on your house on camera. I'm great. Right. Mm -hmm. And then your children love me. So you say your probationary period is over. I want to hire you as a babysitter. And your children are so ecstatic because I'm the black Mary Poppins. Everybody loves me. <laughs> so as I'm leaving to walk out the door, I'm happy. I'm like, let me just tell you something that's that you don't know about me. And I say, uh, I'm bipolar and schizophrenic. I'm not on my medications. And before I came here to babysit your children, I use heroin and Xanax. Do you still hire me? Uh, Will you let me around your children without being supervised? I understand. That's why. All right, probation, is there anything else he needs? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Montemoris, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No. All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes. All right, we can go off the record. So in this court, to be successful on probation, communication is key. Talk to your probation officer. If you feel there is something that they're not addressing, you can always come back to the court and we'll address it here. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. From here on out, everything you do, you need to ask yourself a question. Is this something that could potentially result in me going to prison for 20 years? If the answer is no, don't do it. If it's maybe, don't do it. And in this court, I take reporting very seriously. So you need to always report to your probation officer. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Off the record. Yes. A British client is run with precision. A British home with margin of less. So a nanny that we need to mold the breed is a nanny that we can give commands. Yes, I like that, James.